You guys better know that when Brawl Stars releases 10 new gadgets in the game, I'm going to be covering the best builds for those 10 brawlers. Plus, a bonus brawler at the end. <gasps> First up, we got Ems, and both of her gadgets, honestly, they're amazing. Her new gadget, Acid Spray, is so useful because there's literally walls on every single map, and enemies will very frequently hide behind those walls to take cover from Ems. On the other hand, her friend zoner gadget is by far the better option to use against close range brawlers. The thing is, though, there's gonna be times when you're not going to be facing up against those close range brawlers and won't even need to use it anyway. Which is why I really like her second gadget, Acid Spray, because it's literally going to be useful for you to be able to attack through walls on pretty much every single map and mode that you're going to be playing. Now, both of her star powers, honestly, are really good. However, I have to go with her bad karma star power because it really synergizes with her acid spray gadget, meaning that you're going to be able to deal even more damage as people are behind walls. You attack through the wall and then they're going to run away and take more damage. Plus, that damage is going to help you so much. I will say that I really like Ems's hype star power that actually heals her when she's activating that super for Brawl Ball specifically. There's a lot of times when you're going on offense and the enemy's trying to defend or you're trying to defend that that healing comes in, it really comes in handy. Other than that though, I think Bad Karma is the better option because it just pairs so well with her second gadget. As for gears, I really like the speed gear on M's and the damage gear on M's since it's really important to catch up to enemies and then use her attack and super. Additionally, the damage gear stacked on top of Bad Karma is just, just it's insane damage, okay? It will shred through enemies. So that makes this M's best build. Her new acid spray gadget with her Bad Karma star power and the speed and damage gears. And of course, no build is complete without their skin. Super fan Ems has got to be my favorite, although she doesn't have a lot of skins to choose from. In fact, a lot of the brawlers in this video don't have a lot of skins to choose from. It's almost as if they're new or something. Except for BB, who's neither new nor has few skins. She has a lot of awesome skins. For her best gadget, uh, hands down, extra sticky, okay? It slows enemies hit by her super for two seconds, okay? Like, yeah, I know that that extra healing from her uh, vitamin booster gadget is always going to be useful, but if somebody gets hit by an extra sticky super and they are slowed down, there is no way they're escaping BB. She is she's going to wreck them. There's there's nothing they can do. Now for a star power, we got home run, which is a speed boost and batting stance, which is a shield. I almost always go with home run. I know people really like that batting stance shield, but I find it way easier to dodge enemy shots when she's moving faster than actually like taking that reduced damage. Like you're always going to charge our super, even if you take reduced damage. You know what I mean? So that increased speed, it's just, it's just like a no-brainer for me, especially in games like Brawl Ball where movement is really important. The one exception though is batting stance. That shield is very helpful if you have healers on your team. If you got healers, like that shield, is it's, it's actually really insane. But if I'm playing blind and going into like a random match with randoms, then obviously I'm gonna go with home run. As for gear, Obviously her speed gear and her damage gear. It's just like it's kind of a no-brainer for her That being said I would make an argument for health if she's using her batting stance star power because that shield and that health Just it works very well together and that makes this BB's best build her extra sticky gadget with her home run star power and the speed and damage gear And of course zombie BB is my favorite skin for her, but like <laughs> come on She's got a few skins, you know, but she's got weird hair hair things for heroin BB and then you know These are cool, but like zombie BB. Oh next we got Grom and then we'll cover Byron Okay, Grom got a fancy new gadget, that radio check, three bombs in one quick attack. In my opinion, his first, that watchtower gadget is still the better option, okay? The range is huge, and there are usually bushes, there's bushes on every single map that you're gonna play in the game, right? Now his radio check gadget might be useful on maps with like a high safe, or if siege were still a thing, then it would be great on siege. And I will say that it's very good if you're in lower trophies, because people do not know how to dodge Grom shots in lower trophies. But if you're a competitive player, or you're in higher trophies, or you're trying to push, I do think his watchtower gadget is going to be a little bit more reliable. For star powers, we got foot patrol, which increases his speed when he's holding his super. Then we have X factor, which deals a little bit extra damage at max distance. Honestly, X factor is like my go-to every single time. I can't imagine picking a star power other than X factor right now, okay? Honestly, I don't even try to hit his shots so that it like hits people at max range and I get that extra 30% 30, 30 damage, but I still get a lot of extra damage in just because of the star powers, just because of the way battle works, right? But the other thing is that his, his foot patrol star power is just not very good right now. Grom's a thrower and he's a damage dealer. Why would you hold on to his super for long periods of time just for that extra movement speed when he's going to be hiding behind walls and hiding in bushes and stuff like that, okay? And for the same reasons he doesn't need his speed star power, I don't think he needs the speed gear either. So I would give him damage and shield gears. Especially as a squishy thrower, he's going to benefit from that shield a little bit more than other brawlers. And that means that Grom's best build is his watchtower gadget, X-Factor star power, and the damage and shield gears. And Grom's got one skin right now, so uh, 
I, I I guess I have to play him as a bunny for a while. <laughs> Next we got Byron. His shot in the arm heals him obviously, and then booster shot it, it splits into three different projectiles. I really like Byron's first gadget. Now, typically I like healing abilities on brawlers that have a lot of HP. You get a lot more benefit that way. And even though he doesn't have a whole lot of HP, this gadget is a lifesaver so frequently. Even though it takes a little bit of time for him to heal up, it's just like you use that ammo when you don't need it. You fall back and you get back into action so much faster, so that he can then get to healing his teammates and dealing damage to enemies, which is just so important for him. His new booster shot gadget does seem like it would be the strong gadget if it could pierce through targets with Byron's injection star power. But until it does that, it doesn't seem like a very good gadget because there's not very often that like you can guarantee that you're going to hit all three and you deal less damage and heal less healing when you're actually using it. So like unless you're boost healing a teammate right next to you or you're dealing damage to an enemy right next to you, it's not as useful. And Byron doesn't typically like to be close to enemies, so you get the idea. Now for star powers, we've got decreased healing for the enemies that get hit by a super or the injection, which actually pierces through enemies or teammates. Honestly, injection used to be the way to go, except that for right now, Byron's Malay star power is the best because tanks and healers are very strong in this meta right now and also helps keep any brawler out of a fight that gets hit by a super. It makes a super a lot more valuable to actually throw on an enemy rather than to use to heal on yourself. On top of that, the rework to the health gear will make this star power even more useful than it has been because a lot of those tanks are going with that health gear. Now, Byron's injection star power is a decent ability, but it's just not quite as devastating as Malay's is in the current meta. I might use injection on really open maps against like long range brawlers, but that's pretty much it, which honestly you can still you play. That's actually pretty solid for Byron. He's really good on bounty master to long range like that. Now, the damage gear is great for Byron because it increases how much he can heal as well as how much damage he can deal. And then obviously as a squishy brawler, that shield gear is another really solid choice for him. That means that Byron's best build is the shot in the arm gadget, his Malay star power in the damage and shield go gears and uh, wizard firein so cool you know you gotta appreciate the fact that at least every brawler has a skin right now okay it's not much choice for some brawlers but we're 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 making progress. Okay, next we got Squeak. His first gadget obviously throws very far and then his next one actually reveals bushes which is like I don't know is is that useful? It probably is yeah, honestly, neither of these are super amazing. Wind up isn't super strong, but can be used on pretty much any map or pretty much any game mode and is probably my go to choice most of the time. There are two exceptions, though. If you're playing a map that has a ton of bushes, then his residue gadget is obviously going to be the go to one. But also anytime you're facing off against a Sandy or a Leon and you know they're going to be invisible, then I would also go with residue. Other than those two cases, wind up pretty much every other time. For Squeak Star Powers, we have extra attack damage and we also have slow if somebody gets hit by his super. Honestly, for a Star Power, the, the choice is really obvious to me. Chain reaction pretty much every single time. You get extra damage even if you only hit one target. And if you get multiple targets, then you, that damage really stacks up really quickly. And on top of that, while his super sticky star power is really powerful, his super is so predictable and so easy to dodge. Honestly, I can't remember the last time I get, got hit by one of Squeak's supers. And Squeak is being played a lot right now in Payload. And I played a lot of Squeaks recently. Like, it, you just don't get that slow very often, okay? For his gears, I really like health because he has a lot of HP and he does a lot of damage. So I like to go with his damage gear as well. And that means that his best build is his wind up gadget and his chain reaction star power with the health and damage gears. And uh, I don't have potato squeak. So I have ghost squeak. So I'll go with that for right now. I could probably buy him. Nope. I can't, so I'm not going to right now. <laughs> but just in case there are some Potato Squeak lovers out there, I do want to clarify, I 100% like Ghost Squeak way more. Potato Squeak is just a jumbled mess. Next, we are Colette, and then we got Belle. Okay, now Aunt deals extra damage on her next attack, and this one makes her heal herself for 80% of the damage that she does for the next five seconds. Her new gadget is so good, okay? You're gonna be playing her against tanky brawlers. So you use this against tanky brawlers, and she heals up so much. Even against squishy brawlers, she's still gonna be able to heal up quite a bit in five seconds if she happens to hit all of her shots, okay? Her not on gadget isn't a bad gadget, and I actually might use it against a comp full of like really squishy brawlers, because it, it's really helpful against those brawlers that are just missing that last little bit of HP. You can just guarantee you get that at 1,000 damage in there. But her new second gadget, Oh man, it's it's the way to go. Now for star powers, we got pushing with her super and then that, that shield when she uses her super. And that shield can be a very strong shield. So this is a really tough one and both of them can be really good. However, with her new gadget, her mass attack star power does seem to be a better option most of the time. You might go with push it if you're playing against really close range brawlers like, you know, Fang. That actually would be a really solid option. But otherwise, mass attack is the better option. As for gears, I'd go with her speed and damage gears because she just really doesn't have a huge need for the other gears. And you know, those, those are 
are really consistent, solid gears in pretty much every build. And that means Colette's best build is her gotcha gadget with her mass attack star power and the speed and damage gears. And she has a fair amount of skins. And I will say, I really like Gladiator Colette, but I'm going to go with Trixie Colette here. I mean, just look at the way she nuzzles up with that book. It's so cute. Okay, Belle, we got that trap, that nest egg, and then we have reverse polarity, which makes her shot bounce off of walls. And her first gadget, the nest egg, is definitely my favorite. I mean, it's it's really good. As a sharpshooter, if an enemy gets slowed, it's it's so easy to hit them. You just auto aim. Like, seriously, you don't even have to try. It's like a no brainer. It also deals a little bit of damage, which can, which can prevent them from healing. It's really good. Okay. Her new reverse polarity is like, it's fun to use. But as far as usefulness, Nest Egg absolutely has it beat. In fact, I saw somebody recommend that her reverse polarity should make her next shots for the next five seconds actually all bounce. That might change my mind. That that might make it a little bit more useful, but I don't know. We'll see what happens with that. I'm, I'm sure it'll get buffed sometime. Next, we got star powers. Positive feedback gives her that shield, and we got grounded, which actually prevents the enemy from getting, from reloading their attacks when they get hit by her super. Giving Bella shield whenever she lands an attack, including bouncing between enemies, means that she will have a shield on for a large portion of the entire match, okay? Honestly, I was actually kind of hoping to see some sort of a buff or a rework to her grounded star power that would make enemies lose, like, instantly lose ammo and prevent them from reloading because the problem is is a lot of times you'll you'll hit them with that super but they still have ammo and then they have time to fall back and like to reload it yes it does make things difficult for them but but you don't get value nearly as often as you would with her positive feedback star power just like byron she's gonna go the damage in the shield gears because she has low hp and she has really long range and she does a lot of damage and that means that her best build is her nest egg gadget her positive feedback star power and her damage and shield gears and my favorite skin is not bell gold hand i mean it's gotta be Ivy Bell. Once this thing gets released, oh man. So cool. What? She just pulled her weapon out of the ground. Next, we got Ash, and then we got Lola. Chill Pill uses his rage to heal him, whereas Rotten Banana damages him to give him rage. There is a reason that Supercell had to give Ash's Rotten Banana gadget an emergency nerf, okay? <laughs> it was insane. And it's still really good. However, after the nerf, I think that his Chill Pill gadget is better in most situations because it helps Ash survive longer in those 1v1 situations and gives him a lot more time to like approach enemies, okay? However, if you have a healer on your team, like, I don't know, let's say Byron, who also is incredibly strong right now, then his rotten banana gadget Oh my gosh, it's so good, okay? Working on a tier list video, guys. Spoiler alert, Ash and Byron together are insane. But if you are playing with randoms, then I think Chill Pill is the better, safer choice. Now his first star power, first bash, increases the rage that he gets from his first attack when he's fully reloaded. And his mad as heck star power increases his movement speed depending on how enraged he is. If you're using his rotten banana gadget, absolutely go with his mad as heck star power because you're immediately going to have that movement speed boost. And that's, honestly, that that's really good. I would use that every single time you're using rotten banana. But if you're playing in randoms against randoms, I think the chill pill is going to be the better option, which means that you're going to want to go with his first bash star power so that you can charge up his rage a little bit more frequently. No matter which gadget and star power combination you do go with, for gears, you want to go with speed and health because that speed actually stacks on top of Ash's rage and he has a lot of HP, which is always a good reason to have that health gear. So when it comes to his best build, we have two options. Rotten Banana with Mad as Heck if you're playing in team comps with a healer on your team and Chill Pill with first bash if you're heading into randoms, either build with these two gears. And and uh, my favorite skin for Ash, Ninja Ash, of course. Yeah, love that skin so much. Next is Lola. Her first freeze frame gadget makes it so that her ego stops moving and gains like a huge shield. And then her stunt double allows her to swap back and forth between it. Lola's new gadget is way more fun. And honestly, I think it's better to use than her first gadget, okay? There's all sorts of really cool plays that you can make with this, especially since you can throw her ego over walls and over water. It also heals herself and her ego a little bit, which may be useful, maybe not, may be the reason why you actually win the entire match, okay? I do think that her freeze frame gadget, her first one, will still be useful in hot zone and gem grab, where map control is a little bit more important, because throwing that out there and that shield, I mean, it's such a big shield. It eats up a lot of ammo. If the enemies, like, try to attack it really quickly, which they usually do, that's actually Actually a really great way to eat up their ammo but sun double is better overall for star powers her first is improvise which actually deals additional damage when she's on her third ammo and then sealed with a kiss allows it to heal herself and teammates when her ego actually attacks them and for her star power honestly improvise is the way to go that extra damage is just insane yes it's typically not a good idea to only be using your last ammo you typically want to like save up your ammo but it's do it does happen very often and sometimes it does make a lot of sense to just stay on that last 
less ammo so you can uh, get that extra damage, like especially in heist, okay? Her seals with the kiss star power is a good ability, but the amount of healing that it does compared to how much extra damage her other star power does, it just doesn't even come close. Now for her gears, speed and damage. Pretty much the same for a lot of brawlers that don't have specific characteristics, but those gears are just really good right now. So Lola's best build is her stunt double gadget with her improvised star power and the speed and damage gears, and she only has one skin. And finally, we got Fang. Except we got a bonus brawler at the end? What? What brawler could that be? Okay, both of his gadgets are super good. Corn Fu spreads out corn everywhere, deals a lot of damage, and then Roundhouse Kick stuns people that are next to him? Some brawlers have two gadgets that are just like useless, and then two gadgets that are both amazing. I think his newest Roundhouse Kick gadget is, is better, okay? It, it's tough to call, but that stun is super good for your team, okay? He can super onto anybody, be spamming that gadget button, and as soon as it lands, just attack people, they're stunned for an entire second, they can't run away, your team's gonna be able to deal damage to them. Oh my gosh, it's like, remember when Sandy Sweet Dreams was released, and I was kinda on the fence about like how good it would be, and then all of a sudden it was like, no, this is insane, this needs a nerf, it's so good. I think this is the same story for Fang, okay? Corn Fu is also good because it does little damage to enemies no matter where they are, so it kinda like keeps them from moving away for a few seconds, but Roundhouse Kick the way to go. For star powers, we got Fresh Kicks, which actually allows him to recharge his super if he kills somebody with his super, and Divine Souls, which reduces 500 damage from incoming hits every three seconds with a maximum reduction of 90% of incoming damage. Did anybody catch that? Do you understand what this does? <laughs> Either way, it doesn't actually really matter that much because Fresh Kicks, I think, is the better option. Being able to instantly recharge his super when his super is so strong and is likely to actually get kills, that's that, that's a really good ability, okay? Honestly, I think it could be nerfed. I think it could be. Especially because I do really like the idea of his Divine Soul Star power. It just doesn't prevent enough damage to make me really want to use it. For his gears, guess what? Speed and damage gear. Oh, man. Wow. So that makes this Fang's best build, okay? His roundhouse kick gadget with his fresh kick, star power, and the speed and damage gears. And his only skin, Furious Fang! Furious Fang! Furious Fang! Furious Fang! I have no idea how the voice actor did that. He's so good. Now it's time for bonus brawler. Did anybody guess that it was gonna be for Eve? Oh man, that, wow, what a surprise. Now it's time to be recording this. Eve only has one gadget and one star power. However, these will be released very soon. Gotta Go allows her to jump away and leaves a hatchling, whereas Motherly Love, she activates this and then her next super will actually blow up and heal teammates instead of deal damage to enemies. And honestly, you gotta pick Gotta Go. Her being able to jump away from enemies three times per match and leave a little person behind that will at least waste some ammo is, it's incredibly strong. It is very good especially because she is a brawler that struggles against close range brawlers. This gives her an immediate way to deal with it at least three times per match. Her motherly love gadget can be useful to her teammates. I mean, it can heal a fair amount. However, you can't always control how many of the little minis are going to go to which teammates or if you want to go to yourself. And since you don't have complete control, it's not always the best. Okay, for star powers, unnatural order reverses the order of her eggs and happy surprise makes it so that if her third egg actually hits a brawler, it will spawn a little mini Eve that will go and attack people. And her second star power, Happy Surprise, is really strong. And in fact, unless Supercell nerfed it before it actually gets released, which there's a chance that they might, because my word, it's insane. You get that last hit and like, it's gonna waste so much ammo on the enemy team. It's just gonna make her feel incredibly strong, like ridiculously strong. And so by the time it's actually released, maybe I'll have a different opinion, but you know, unless something changes, it's, it's definitely the go-to star power. That being said, I was actually very surprised while pushing Eve up to like 600 trophies, which I've got a video on that that you guys should definitely check out if you haven't seen it already. And that is that Unnatural Order is actually really strong because it makes it so that that first egg that she shoots is the big one. And the big one has a huge hitbox which makes it super easy for her to actually hit her targets because her enemies do not have very much time to actually escape that. As for her gears, she's a long range, low health brawler, so absolutely damage and shield gears. And that means that Eve's best build is her gotta go gadget with her happy surprise star power with the damage and shield gears. And we just got one skin, Spiky Eve. So that is my favorite. And there you have it, the best builds for the 10 new brawlers plus a bonus brawlers that just brawlers that recently got 10 gadgets. You just, just work with me guys, it's, it's fine. I am 100% confident that nobody is going to disagree with any of my decisions. So nobody's allowed to comment in this video. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, I do want to hear if you guys have different advice. Maybe, maybe it's different in the meta where you're at. So just let me know. You're just not going to change my mind until balance changes happen. Subscribe for some more Brawl Stars content right here and Clash Mini content and Free Fire content. And also there's a cool video right here. I'd appreciate you guys using Code Kairos in the Brawl Stars shop. You're going to make me do the jingle? Okay.
K A I R O S code Kairos in the Brawl Star shop. That was not very good, but I appreciate you guys sticking around and we'll see you in Brawl Stars.